Hey guys, today we are going to do biological approaches from the Cambridge AS level syllabus. Now, biological approaches has three main studies in it, and the first one is by Dement and Claitman, and this talks about dreams and sleep. So basically, in the Cambridge AS level syllabus, there are four main approaches that you're supposed to learn, and each approach has its main assumptions. So Cambridge requires you to learn the main assumptions of each approach, and this is questioned on the CIE exam. You can be asked, give two main assumptions of biological approaches. So you're supposed to know at least two main assumptions of each approach. So for biological approach, I've given two assumptions. First is that our behaviors, emotions, they're all like explained by the effect of our hormones, genetics, and evolution. The second main assumption is that similarities and differences between people, how are they understood? So they are understood by biological factors and their interaction with other factors. The interaction of biological factors with other factors. Now, moving on, for each study, not just Dement and Claitman, for each study, you're supposed to know eight things. That is the psychology being investigated, the background. Background is questioned in the exam. You can be asked that tell the background of this study. Then thirdly, the aim, research, methodology, procedure, results, evaluation, and ethical issues. So let's start off with the psychology being investigated. What was the psychology being investigated in Dement and Claitman's study? There were two things being investigated, sleep and dreams. So what is sleep? Sleep is an altered state of consciousness. And there are five stages, which is found by researchers that there are five stages. Now stage one to four are non-rapid eye movement sleep stages. And your fifth stage is the rapid eye movement stage. In the rapid eye movement stage, there's a high frequency of brain waves and a low amplitude. And these are similar to when we are awake. So brain activity is the highest during the REM stage. And researchers think that in the REM stage is when we are dreaming. Now, second is dreams. Dreams are just subjective memories of what we experience while we are asleep and in Dement and Claitman they wanted to investigate they were entrusted to see that are people more likely to report dreams when they are in their REM state or in their NREM state now the background of the study what was the background there are three things that you're supposed to know in the background so Dement and Claitman they were interested in a way to in a reliable way to determine when a person is dreaming. They wanted to know in which stage or what time a person was dreaming. Like, is there any biological basis to it? Is there a way to measure that the person is dreaming? So they wanted to figure that out. Secondly, they noticed that a person who is in their REM stage of sleep, they're more likely to recall their dreams. Whereas a person in their non-rapid eye movement stage and REM stage, they find it difficult to remember their dreams. So what was this? They were interested to find this too and if it's true or not. Then thirdly, people were showing REMs during their sleep and this corresponded to a specific pattern. Where was this pattern being recorded? It was recorded on an electroencephalogram, EEG. And so basically everyone had a specific pattern of sleep which occurred physically throughout the night. So these were the three things in the background. Now moving to the aim of the study. There were a total of four aims. First was that Dement and Claitman wanted to see that does a person remember their dream in the REM stage of sleep or in the non-REM stage of sleep? So which of the two? Then secondly, they wanted to see is there a link between the length of the dream and the length of the REM period? So how long the dream is and how long the REM period is, is there a link between that? Thirdly, they wanted to see that the vertical or horizontal pattern of eye movement, is it related to what the person is dreaming about? 
And lastly, they wanted to check if there is a positive correlation between the length of REM and the number of words given in a dream narrative. That is what how the person is describing what happened in their dream. So does it has a positive correlation with the length of the REM period? Now moving on to the research methodology. The study was conducted in a sleep laboratory at the University of Chicago in USA and different methods of experiment and correlation were used. The experiments in the study, they used repeated measures design. Repeated measures design means that all participants, they will take part in both conditions of the IV, in the independent variable, both conditions of the independent variable. Now, the study had four ind uh, three independent variables and three dependent variables and the last aim of the study which was a correlation it has co-variables now for aim one the independent variable was whether the person was woken up in their rem sleep or the non-rem sleep and the dependent variable for aim one was whether the person could recall their dream or not now for aim two was if they were woken up 5 or 15 minutes after their REM sleep. And the dependent variable was whether they could tell that if they were sleeping for 5 or 15 minutes. Now for the third one, it was the eye movement. Was the eye movement horizontal or vertical or a mix of both? And the dependent variable for AIM-3 is the description of the dream. Now for AIM-4, the cool variables were Co-variable one was the number of minutes spent in REM sleep, and the second co-variable was the number of words in the corresponding dream narrative recording, the dream that the participants told about, like their narrative of the dream. The study had a total of nine participants, seven of which were men and two of which were women. Five of the participants were studied more intensively, whereas four of them were just used to confirm the result. And this is the sample of Dement and Clayton study. Now the procedure of the study, what actually happened? So all the participants, they had to come to the laboratory before their usual bedtime. And they were asked to do something. What were they asked to do? They were asked to avoid consuming alcohol and caffeine because it might have acted as a co-variable. So the researchers, they wanted to avoid that. Therefore, they were asked to avoid consuming those two things. Now, each participant, they had two or more electrodes placed near their eyes. That was to record their eye movement. Was it horizontal or vertical? And then they had two to three electrodes fixed to the scalp. This was done to record their brain waves and this was done through a machinery known as an electroencephalogram which you're supposed to know the name of this because it is asked in the exam now the participants they were taken into a quiet dark room to sleep and the wires and everything they were made into a ponytail shape just like shown in the picture so that the participant they could move easily during the night and so the wires wouldn't tangle and it wouldn't disturb them now the eeg it was run throughout the night in the researchers room in the next room and throughout the night the participants they were woken during various times now, they were woken up also in their REM stage and in their non-REM stages. In both stages, they were woken up. And how were they woken up? The researcher wouldn't go in and wake them up. They were woken up by a doorbell. A doorbell that was loud enough to wake them up from deep sleep. And this doorbell method was used for every participant, each and one of them. So... They were off. When they were woken up by the doorbell, they were asked to say whether they were dreaming or not. So when they said, yes, I was dreaming, so then they were asked to describe their dream into a recording device near their bed. The researcher wouldn't go in and ask them. They had to first rec uh, describe their dream into the recording device. And if the researcher had any questions 
or anything further to ask, they would occasionally go into the room and ask further questions about the dream. Otherwise, they would not go inside. Each participant had to go through the same procedure. All of them went through the same procedure and thus this was standardized for all the participants. The results of the study. Now, for the results, the researchers found out that REM sleep never occurred immediately after a person just went to sleep. And it would actually occur in regular intervals throughout the night. So it would come like, for example, if the person fell asleep, it might come after two hours, then finish and then come after two hours, then finish, then come after two hours like that in regular intervals throughout the night. And the duration of REM varied from three to 50 minutes with an average of 20 minutes. And they were longer later in the night. So when a person slept, they were not that long, but if they've, been, if they've been sleeping for like eight hours, so maybe in that six to eight hour, their REM uh, period is longer. Now, for the aims, the results for the aims that we wanted to test, participants recalled their dream more in, when they were woken up in the REM stage. So they recalled their dream 80% of the times when they were woken up in their REM stage, whereas they would recall 17% of the times when they were woken up in their non-REM stage. For the second thing, all participants, they were able to determine if they'd been dreaming for 5 minutes or for 15 minutes. So they got an accuracy of 83% of times from 111 awakenings so they could determine if they were sleeping for 5 or 15 minutes but there was one participant that I haven't mentioned here there was one person who was under or overestimating their time so they couldn't really know whether it was 5 or 15 minutes and they weren't really included in the study then now for the eye movements there was vertical eye movements horizontal eye movements little or no eye movements and mixed eye movements so you need to learn one dream of each eye movement for vertical eye movement uh, dreamers said they were looking at climbers going on a cliff or climbing ladders or throwing a basketball for horizontal they watched two people throwing tomatoes at each other for little or no eye movement they report uh, they reported driving a car for mixed eye movement there was a group of people talking or they were searching for something or fighting with someone. Now, for the last aim, there was a positive correlation between the REM and number of words in the dream narrative. And the average correlation coefficient was plus 0 0.58. And you are supposed to learn this and you can give this in your answers in the exam. Now, for the evaluation, there are strengths and weaknesses. As for the strengths of Dement and Clayton study, it was high in reliability. Why? Because there's a high level of standardization, meaning all the participants went through the same procedure. And thus, you can get a new sample and you can do the exact same study Dement and Clayton did on that new sample. Thus, the study is replicable and you can test the study for reliability. Secondly, the study is high in validity. Why? Because the participants were telling their dream in a recording device, not to the experimenter. Thus, the experimenter did not influence their dream narrative and the, it is free from experimenter effects, thus high in validity. Stec uh, thirdly, objectivity. More quantitative data was used and this avoided researcher bias. An EEG was used and an electroencephalogram was used and thus this made little subjective interpretation by researchers this is important because subjectivity basically means like opinions or like feelings and stuff and this makes a study weaker because it's not based on actual factual objective stuff then lastly generalizability generalizability was high and good because the results were similar to other studies of uninterrupted sleep. And secondly, the psychological process of 
REM and non-REM sleep is the same for everyone. So thus, you can uh, apply the study to everyone else or the, all the population around. Now, why is this study weak? Why does it have weaknesses? For the weaknesses, it was low in validity. Why? That was because there was loss of some dream recordings because some participants, when they were talking in the dream recorder that was next to their bed, they were mumbling. So they discarded those recordings. However, they could have had something important in it. So they're therefore not valid. And then weakness was uh, the definition of dream length was operationalized. Beca uh, and this is a weakness because everyone has a different vocabulary or how verbal they are. So maybe based on that, they described their dream. So that may not be a right way to like compare it with the length of REM period and the dream narrative. Therefore, low in validity. It also lacked ecological validity because the experiment took part in a laboratory and not in a real life situation. So people could have acted different. They could have been annoyed with the EEG on their head or acted different because they didn't have coffee or alcohol, which they might usually have. So their sleep might have been different from what they usually their sleep usually is. And lastly, it lacked generalizability. It was because there were only nine participants, a very small sample size, and there were more men than women. So therefore, a gender bias situation here as well. And all these, uh, all these individuals, they wanted to participate in the study. So what about those who didn't want to participate? Their results matter too. Now, the last thing to know is the ethical issues. The ethical issues are actually positive, and that is because confidentiality was maintained. No one's name was used. Their initials were actually used when discussing their results, which kept their identity hidden. And no personal details of the participants were shared, and this prevented embarrassment, which is a strength for the study. So this is it for the video of Dement and Claytman. All the content of the study is completed. You can refer to the notes that I made, the slides. It covers completely everything that the syllabus requires. And I would like for you to like and subscribe and comment down below what you want me to make a video on next.